I said in the very beginning of this game to everybody, I will not lie one time on this game. So let's just keep it honest between us. Let's keep it real. I'll, I'll keep it real, Coach. Okay. I've seen cracks right away. I had some ideas before, I ever, before they ever was emerged. It's hard to keep six people from different walks of life to stick together when they hate each other. So I'm just here to make sure everybody hates each other. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Perdiam, and in this video, I'll be discussing something I don't think anyone ever expected me to be talking about. So to go outside of the talk of Survivor for a second, while I love doing top fives and top tens for you guys, I equally enjoy talking about the strategies and the concepts and the speculation that this show provides us, which is exactly what I'll be doing here. I really can't wait to talk about this video subject, so let's just get right into it. The Intentional Matt Singh, what is that? How does it get its name? Wasn't that just a tribe from one season a while ago or something? I, I don't get it. The intentional Matt Singh is a strategic move in Survivor. When I like to look at strategic moves in Survivor, sometimes I like to simplify them into three tiers. The first tier is a basic move. For example, I have more numbers than you, so I'll vote you out. Or let's make an alliance. Those are pretty fundamentally basic things that you just got to do to get through Survivor. I'm already a superstar. Been made alliances with everybody on the tribe, and everybody seems to think that I'm their only alliance. That makes me very happy. That saves my life. <laughs> it's really just up to me now to pick them apart. Whoever I'm ready to send home after this first challenge, that's the end of it, you know? I mean, it's just pecking order. The second tier is a little bit more advanced. For example, I might get votes, so I'll play an idol, but then I have to think about the fact that maybe they're bluffing and I have to consider playing the idol for somebody else. Moves that I'd say require a little bit more plotting a few rounds in advance, but they're not so strategically crazy that you haven't seen them before. And then we have the third tier, and this tier is reserved for some next level voodoo magic. Moves that are both bold and high stakes, where if they succeed, you'll be heavily rewarded, but if they fail, well, yeah. It's kind of like JT giving an idol to Russell. My whole reason why I'm throwing my neck on the chopping block is to establish whether I'm running the game. This whole ruse that I just threw on was just to fill out my tribe and exactly how I need to work things. It's gonna be worse and worse and worse. So hopefully everybody loves me to the point to where they would rather have me as a hindrance than to keep Russell. I took my shot, I'm playing chess the best way I know how, and hopefully I'm a king me. To me, the intentional Matt Singh is a tier three strategical move. It's a move that is so risky, I don't think it's ever actually been implemented before. But it has been discussed and has even unintentionally happened many times. So for those of you out of the loop, the intentional Matt Singh is when you purposefully tank your tribe's numbers. That's right, purposefully tank your tribe to put yourself at a numbers disadvantage come the merge so that when you do merge, the other tribe or tribes view you as so non-threatening and powerless that you gain a little bit of leeway in the short term, allowing you to fit into the cracks of the big alliance, and hopefully you will slide your way all the way to the final tribal council, whereupon you win the game because you have such a fantastic underdog story. Whew, okay, so you see what I mean by uh, next level? And it sounds kind of silly and a little bit too much. You're intentionally losing challenges to go to tribal council to vote people from your own tribe out. Are you kidding me? It's completely backwards to what history has proven is the bona fide tried and tested way to play the early game. You win challenges, outnumber the opposition when you get to the merge, and then you just vote them out and make your way to the end game. What do they say? Throwing challenges is for the weak-minded. It's for the people who will just, they overplay. They have no idea what they're doing. Keep hope alive. You know, everybody always thinks that you don't want to throw a challenge. It has, there hasn't been a lot of success in throwing challenges. Because all, all, all of a sudden you're down numbers, but he's not a number. Very rarely in the game of Survivor does it work out in your favor to throw challenges. But in this particular instance, I think we have a very special situation. I always said I would never throw a challenge because it doesn't work out. I know it sounds stupid, like why get rid of numbers, but he's not our number. That's why. But then I look at history, at the data, and I realize that simply outnumbering your opposition come the merge isn't always the best place to be in. There are a lot of examples where the person who won the season was actually in the minority at the merge, and yet they still won. Many times because they were underestimated and overlooked. We've got time in our hands. Let's knock a few of our own out while we're at it. These powerless new tribe mates, maybe they'll have a good story or two to tell while we give them another episode at the bottom. Ha! <laughs> the joke's on them. I don't think we should send JT out. Oh, now you're making friends with him. We had the awesome time. He's such a good dude, dude. Debbie had such a good time with him. He is. He's one of the most amazing people I've ever met I in know. life. I think what we should do is you, me, Taj, Steven, JT, take out 
Tyson, Coach, and Aaron start taking them out. The origin of this move stems from the 25th season of Survivor, Survivor Philippines, which began with three tribes, red, yellow, and blue. The blue tribe was known as Mat Singh, which is what this name of this move is called, and on paper they looked to be a pretty strong group of people. The problem was they dropped the ball for the first four episodes, leading them to tribal council week after week after week after week, literally four straight weeks. They went from a tribe of six people to just a tribe of two, while their other two opposing tribes still had all of their players there's all six players left in the game. To say that the remaining two Matt Singh players' chances at making it far into the season were pretty bad, <laughs> oh, it's an understatement. It was incredibly bleak for both Malcolm and Denise, who were close allies but knew they were now in a position where they had a mountain of a season ahead of them. Yeah, everyone loves an underdog story, right? So two against 12, the odds are long, but you know, I wouldn't count us out just yet. Of course, the intentional Matt Singh wouldn't be a term if they were voted out right away. And that's because they were. Both Malcolm and Denise made it all the way to the final four, whereupon Denise even won the game quite handily, despite having to go to every single tribal council for the entirety of the season. This is a feat that had never been done before or has been done since. It was incredibly impressive, but what both Malcolm and Denise did was unintentional. They didn't want to lose those first four challenges, placing themselves between a rock and a hard place. After all, Survivor is a game about numbers, and when you reduce your numbers, you're absolutely lowering your chances to win. But then history has shown us, both before the Matt Singh tribe and after, that sometimes having less numbers is actually advantageous. If Survivor were simply a game of numbers, then sure, having less allies means you're screwed. Four with nine equals out. But I'm sorry, yeah. No. Okay. Four. But Survivor isn't. It's a social, psychological game first, which means no matter what, even if you lose 66% of your tribe before the swap even hits, you can still make allies in the unlikeliest of places to replace the initial numbers you lost along the way. There are many examples of this quote unquote unintentional Matt Singh that have happened before. In Survivor Marquesas, the fourth season, we saw Sean and Vesepia go down in numbers seven to two before ultimately being scooped up by another alliance to reach the final five, whereupon Vesepia won the game. In Survivor Palau, we saw Stephanie LaGrosa have her tribe be completely obliterated until it was literally just her left, where she then joined the other tribe. However, Greg and Tom from the other tribe recognized her threat level and neutralized her fairly soon after, making it so she only made it to the final seven, despite losing every single immunity challenge in the pre-merge. We saw Danny Boatwright from Survivor Guatemala be down in numbers five to one, and despite being vulnerable at the final five and the final four, she still managed to reach the final tribal council where she won the game. And then we get to Survivor Token Chains. We saw one of the most famous instances of this happening where Jalapo was down six to three before being underestimated by the Timbira tribe who allowed them to maneuver their way into the cracks of the larger alliance, ultimately seeing the three Jalapo members reached the final four, with two of them sitting in the final tribal seats. Many people might remember Fofo from Survivor Samoa and how they were down a whopping eight to four at the merge, yet all four of their members made it to the final five and would have basically reached the final four intact, save an immunity win by this guy. Glue did technically give Fofo a one pass, which was the very first tribal council of the merge. I would qualify that as what this is. They underestimated the Fofo of four because they had basically no numbers. They were not a threat, but of course that ended up being a game ruining mistake for them. So. What you need to know, you know. If you choose a different route, there'll be a different outcome. I can't guarantee the four of you to hear them all. Here's how I feel right now. I feel like Eric is talking to me like a child. We're screwed anyway. And I think what we should do is we should tell them, yeah, sure, we'll vote the way you want to vote, we'll flush out the item, and then we go get Eric. I would argue that there is one case of this that I don't think many people report on. It was when Tyler and Carolyn in Survivor Worlds Apart, they fell into a similar position as Malcolm and Denise did, though you wouldn't really know about this since the edit really never focused on them given neither of them won the game and only Carolyn reached the end while Tyler was eliminated in seventh. Still though, they were basically entering the merge with only the two of them in an alliance before joining the majority blue callers where they just basically disappeared. The latest case that I almost thought we were gonna see was in Survivor HHH, where either the heroes or the hustlers were 
were going to become similar to Matt Singh, having lost two and three members from their original tribe in the pre-merge. Particularly with the Hustlers in Devin, Lauren, and Ryan, they were definitely the underdogs going into the merge, but they had also already established strong enough bonds that they didn't seem like underdogs. Still, the three of them did make seventh, fourth, and third place, and any of them could have possibly won had fate not intervened. This is the moment that we're going to shine up this crappy little tricycle and try and sell it to these other tribes who have actually had success. Now, we're not going to be used as pawns. We also understand that we're not coming in as the CEOs. We may be mopping the floor at first, but... <laughs> Which is why we're hustlers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're so, I'm not giving up. I know nobody here has given up, and we are the only tribe who is going to have real unity, and that is something unique about us, and they don't have that. But all of these cases were unintentional. The intentional Matt Singh attempts to pull some next level manipulation to recreate all of these scenarios I just talked about, but on purpose, in order to distort the perception of your threat level. I consider Boston Rob to be one of the greatest players to ever play the game, and he said that Survivor isn't really about how you perceive others, nor is it about how others perceive you. It's about how you perceive others' perceptions of you. In other words, it's not just about being self-aware, but also being aware of your own perceptions of others, and then you have to ask yourself if what you think is the case is actually the case. Just because you perceive something or you think you perceive something doesn't necessarily mean it's the truth. The intentional Matt Singh is one example of some advanced strategy that attempts to tip the scales in your favor by presenting an image of the scales being tipped entirely against you. The incredible risk of all of this, however, is that you have to be intelligent enough to brace yourself for being an underdog, which isn't easy for a lot of people, while also socially suave enough to ensure that you your opposition doesn't see you as a threat because you're an underdog. All I can hope for is look for a crack and get myself wedged in there because it's the easiest thing in the world to say, he's the odd guy, let's get rid of him. You want to talk about Oh, yeah, please. No, you're so welcome. It doesn't feel like you're... Dude, we were rooting for you. Yeah, we yeah. really wanted to. I wanted to be here too, so this worked out well. <laughs> For example, strong players like in Survivor Palau with Tom Westman or Greg Carey, they were never going to let an underdog like Stephanie go much further than she did, despite her building narrative. They actually talked about it a lot on the show. Some may think that Stephanie deserves to stay around, but in, in the, the grand scheme of things, winning this game is hardly about deserving. I don't care if someone deserves to be here or not. If, if you have a role in my strategy, then you deserve to be here so you can help me win a million dollars. I get concerned about the whole 11 tribal councils in a row. Stephanie's still surviving. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's a story developing that we need to put an end to. Stephanie's story has been continuing and continuing, and so you can just see it all coming together. Stephanie conquers Oolong, then comes in and conquers Karor. And we want to all prevent that from happening. And these reasons alone are likely why we will never see an intentional Matt Singh ever really come to be. It's just, it's incredibly risky. And in a game like Survivor, where there's so much luck involved already, between the cast to the twist to the challenges, there's just, there's no reliable way to intentionally take this strategy to the bank. That being said, when it does happen, it really does bear fruit for at least one of the Matt Singh and Spirit players. I personally would love to see this strategy happen. I think it's really fascinating to consider, but I also also get why it probably never will. Sitting in our shelter this morning, you know, the rain's coming down and the three of us are in there and, you know, we, we joke and we're making jokes and having conversations, but then you'll get that silence. And my thoughts aren't on like, oh, missing home yet. My thoughts are on, how do I stay here? The minute I don't take all my stuff to tribal council will be the night I'm probably going home. And I think that's where I'm going to leave this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this speculation. I have another one in stow, so be prepared. But I want to turn this to you guys. What do you think about the intentional Matt Singh strategy? Would you ever, ever, ever consider pulling this off if you made it onto the show? I think the closest we may have ever come to seeing this play out was Russell in Samoa when he sabotaged his own tribe which may have contributed to their continuous losses. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. I also quickly want to add that I've included my Twitter and Insta in the description down below if you're interested in following my life or updates to the channel. Some of you have been asking for them for a while, so there you go. Either way, until next time, my name is Pretty. I'm saying thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the final four. My plan is with Denise and Malcolm to mount the greatest comeback that's ever been seen. There is no quit in either one of them. There damn sure isn't any quit for me because I know I was willing to die for this damn game the last time I played it. So line it up, let's go, and we'll let the chips fall where they may.